The biggest obstacle to social progress is our broken housing market, says Saji Javid. Fixing it means tackling some tough vested interests. The community secretary is right on both counts, but his housing white paper isn't up to the job. Over the last 20 years, we've built two and a half million too few homes. That's led to soaring prices, making houses increasingly unaffordable. In the early 90s, low and middle income workers needed to save around 5% of their wages for three years on average to build the deposit for a first time home. These days, they'd need 24 years of such savings. Generation rents frustrated, and rightly so. 10 years ago, 65% of 25 to 34 year olds were proud owner occupiers. Now it's less than 40%. The majority then of a generation of young adults is priced out of the property market. And of those who did buy their first home in 2015, half got help from the bank of mum and dad. And in the southeast, it was two thirds. The white paper headlines are largely about the green belt, but that's a diversion. What we really need is for the big house builders that dominate the market to ease the blockage using the planning permission they've already got. There's evidence, which the government largely accepts, of a deliberate building go slow to keep prices and profits as high as possible. Sajid Javid promised tough measures to stop large house builders from sitting on so-called land banks. But after the white paper, their share prices soared. The UK housing market, once a source of social mobility, is now driving growing resentment. This housing market white paper promised much, but it doesn't quite stack up.